In 1945 after the Second World War ended, many men who had finished their mandatory military service returned to America, including many baseball players. They returned back and actively played in competitions to entertain citizens who still felt the post-war trauma. At that time, baseball was considered a unifying sport for Americans. Unfortunately, baseball still could not unite white people and black people. That year, racism was still a strapping issue in America, even the baseball league was divided into two divisions as a result of that, namely the Negro League for black people and the Major League for white people. In 1946, 16 Major League Baseball clubs and a total of 400 white players were recorded. Until finally in 1947 the number of Major League white players was reduced to 399 thanks to the services of one person named Ricky. Ricky was not a baseball player but a businessman who owned three major baseball clubs in America. One morning, Ricky out of the blue ordered his team manager and assistant to recruit a black player into his baseball team. Ricky felt that maybe with one black player, other black baseball fans would definitely support his team. Hearing his boss's reckless decision, the manager tried to tell him the worst scenario of what could happen to their team in the end. Ricky had made up his mind and his decision was irrefutable. For him, as long as the new player was profitable, no matter what skin color he is, he would be ready to take the risk. That night, at a Negro League baseball game, a player named Jackie was trying to outweat the opposing team using his strange technique. Jackie was the ace of the team. Thanks to that unique technique, Jackie's team won the game. The next day, Ricky, his assistant, and the team manager began to check the files of black players who were suitable to play for their team. After a long search, Ricky finally found a special talent named Jackie. Even though the manager has warned him that based on Jackie's record, he was a troublemaker and an emotional player, Ricky didn't care at all. For him, emotions were a sign of enthusiasm. The next day, Jackie was summoned to the office and without further ado, Ricky immediately offered Jackie a contract to join one of his baseball teams, Montreal Royals, with a monthly payment of $4,100 and an insurance bonus, as long as Jackie promised not to do any more trouble. As the only black person in the league, there would definitely be a lot of insults and pressure from the audience, the opposing team players, or even from his own teammates, so Ricky hoped that Jackie could be more in control of his emotions to accept all of those obstacles. Ricky's words just challenged Jackie. He was also willing to accept the offer. Two days later, Jackie and his wife left for Florida, where they met a man who was sent by Ricky named Smith. While working in Florida, Ricky was provided home, facilities, and personal assistants who would always look after Jackie. Besides being Jackie's assistant, Smith also worked part-time at the printing office as a journalist. After dropping Jackie's wife to Jackie's new home, they both then went to the training ground. When Jackie started the training session, the coach warned Ricky to be careful by saying that Jackie was a lowly black person which could be dangerous. The coach's words irritated Ricky. He threatened if the coach did or said any racist words again, he himself would be the one who fired him. Hearing the threat, the coach immediately excused himself. A few days later, Jackie's first match day arrived. The match was only a friendly match between two basketball teams that Ricky owned. That was between Montreal Royals against Ricky's greatest team named Brooklyn Dodgers. Even though the match was between two major league teams, which was the league for white people, there were still many black people who came just to watch Jackie play for the match. Throughout the game, the white audience kept insulted and cursed at Jackie. But instead of being nervous, Jackie stayed calm and showed his unique technique to the opposing team. Thanks to Jackie's strange skill, Montreal Royals won the game. In the night, Jackie stayed at Smith's house. While Smith was chatting with his friend on the terrace, a white foreign man came looking for Jackie. The man couldn't accept such lowly black people like Jackie beating the white man team. He threatened that if Jackie didn't take his leave from the city soon, he and a group of other white people would beat Jackie to death. To avoid any trouble, Smith then took Jackie home. 
The next day at the field, Ricky told Jackie that the Montreal Royals players praised Jackie's last performance. Ricky hoped that as time goes on, Jackie's performance would significantly be improved, so much that just by seeing Jackie's face could make the opposing team anxious and scared. Maybe later, Jackie would be caught off guard or fail to hit the ball, but from these failures, Jackie could learn how to never give up, even on the hardest time. If in the world of baseball, they were used to always getting ups and downs, they had to be strong in the real world too. Everyone would have to face the trials of life from time to time. Hearing Ricky's words, Jackie's bad thoughts from last night faded. He smiled happily. On the day of his first official match in the major league, unlike the other players who took the bus to the game venue, Jackie had to take the train all alone to reach the field. When he was about to leave, he met some children. They were Jackie's fans. Jackie then gave a baseball to one of the children as his appreciation for their support. Jackie finally arrived at the major league match. The Montreal Royals team won again, thanks to Jackie. Jackie's life has now completely changed. He gained more fame. Even his white neighbors started cheering upon him, despite him being black. One night, Ricky called Brooklyn Rogers' coach. Ricky told him that he and his assistant had secretly planned to promote Jackie to the team by next week. Sadly, the plan was ruined because a player accidentally eavesdropped and then provoked the other players to sign the petition letter refusing Jackie's promotion. Ricky then ordered the coach to advise his players to accept Jackie into the team no matter what. After the call ended, the coach immediately gathered all the players in the kitchen. While holding back his anger, the coach asked why they refused Jackie's presence on the team. One of the players replied that he was embarrassed to play with Jackie. He was ashamed of his friends if he had to play in the same team as black people. The coach was annoyed with that answer. He firmly explained that he didn't care what his friends or even the president said, he didn't care about Jackie's skin color, whether he was white or white. It didn't matter if he was a human or a lowly animal. For him, as long as Jackie could bring victory to the team, Jackie would be accepted on his team. Hearing that, the players couldn't argue and stayed silent. The next morning, one of the players who still didn't want to play with Jackie met Ricky in his office. He threatened to resign from the team and joined another team in the next season if Ricky kept Jackie in the Brooklyn Rodgers. But instead of being afraid, Ricky even dared him to do his intention. He then told him to leave his office. A few days later, Jackie officially joined the Brooklyn Rodgers. That day was his first game as a Brooklyn Rodgers player. When he arrived in the changing room, Jackie was moved to see his team uniform. He was given the number 42. He never thought that black people like him could get into a baseball team of this capacity. After changing his jersey, Jackie walked into the field and started playing. But just as the match started, the racist referee suddenly fouled him and forced him out of the field. Thanks to that violation, the team lost the match. Three days later, in his second match, Jackie was again subjected to racial treatment. When he wanted to hit the ball, the opposing team's coach kept insulting him, even to the point of giving a code to his players to throw the ball right into Jackie's face. Luckily, Jackie could dodge the ball, but the opposing coach didn't stop insulting him. Finally, the insults finally affected Jackie's mentality and slowly declined his performance. After three unsuccessful attempts to hit the ball, the opposing team's coach screamed for Jackie to get out while calling him a brainless black monkey. Hearing the incredibly insulting word, Jackie was silent and then went straight into the hallway. He vented all his anger and broke his bat. Amid the desperation, Ricky came to calm him down, but whatever came out of Ricky's mouth couldn't help Jackie with his desperation. Jackie's mental state was very broken. He was angry, desperate, and hurt, but couldn't do anything about it. Jackie just wanted to go home, to the league he was originally in. Hearing Jackie vent his problems, Ricky said that he understood the problem, but he persuaded him to keep fighting for it. He motivated Jackie to prove to the opponent how good his performance is. To show that black people were not lowly creatures. Ricky then told Jackie to go back to the field and showed that he could be the cure for the racial issue in the hearts of white people. Ricky's words inspired him. Even though he was still broken inside, he tried to return to the field and fight for himself. On the field, the opposing coach insulted Jackie again. One of Jackie's teammates got fed up with the coach's behavior and finally confronted him. The referee who saw that incident separated them both to avoid further problems. Thanks to Ricky's motivation, Jackie's performance went up dramatically. Robinson with <laughs> Scrappy play.
The next day, at the office, when Ricky was chatting with his assistant, the previous player that threatened to move to another team came there to apologize and begged Ricky not to transfer him to another team. He had learned his lesson and realized that his racist attitude had been wrong. In the next match, Brooklyn Rodgers faced the strongest team in North America, the Pittsburgh Pirates. In the middle of the game, when Jackie was about to hit the ball, the pitcher from the opposing team tried to foul him. He intentionally threw the ball toward Jackie's face. Seeing their partner injured, Jackie's teammates rushed to the field to check on his condition. Due to the incident, the game had to be stopped. A few days later, while Ricky was at work, one of the players named Pee Wee visited his office and told him that he received two death threats. If he still played baseball with Jackie, he was worried about his safety. But instead of worrying about the threats, Ricky laughed that off. He then showed him a bunch of death threat letters that white people sent to Jackie. Seeing that, Pee Wee was embarrassed with himself. He felt ashamed that he had complained about a small thing like this. From there, he began to be amazed by Jackie's mentality, who could still play well even though he received so many threats. In the next match, when the players were warming up, as usual, the insults from the supporters could be heard. Suddenly, Pee Wee approached Jackie and then embraced him, regardless of the audience's insults. Pee Wee apologized to Jackie for everything that had happened to him. All this time, he really wanted to befriend Jackie, but because of the doctrine from his parents since a young age, who taught him that black people were bad influence, he never dared to approach him. But since he saw Jackie's mentality, he finally dared to embrace him, not only just in front of his parents, but in front of thousands of white people. Pee Wee told him that he would show them all that racism was wrong. Before returning to his position, Pee Wee said if the audience still discriminated against black people, he would ask the other Brooklyn Rodgers players to wear matched uniform numbers with Jackie, which was 42. Not long after, the match started. Jackie and his team played in harmony and scored many points. When it was the opponent's turn to hit the ball. When Jackie was guarding the base, one of the opponents intentionally stepped on Jackie's foot and badly injured him. In the medical room, Ricky tried to cheer Jackie up to make him feel better, but instead of being entertained, Jackie asked why a white person like Ricky would want him on his team. He knew that there are many white players out there he could recruit to his team who might be better than him. Ricky then told Jackie about his story when he was still a baseball coach. There was a black man who was very good at playing baseball but because of the color of his skin, the university only allowed him to be a ball boy. Seeing all that and couldn't do anything about it made him ashamed of himself. So, when he finally succeeded with his job and owned his own team, Ricky was determined to make a change in the world of baseball and atone for his guilt. When Jackie heard Ricky's story, he was stunned. Weeks passed and Jackie, along with the Brooklyn Rodgers managed to win game after game. Many white children started to idolize Jackie. Ricky said that Jackie had become the antidote to racism for the American people. Finally, Jackie managed to lead his team to the finals. When it was Jackie's turn to be the batter, he met again with the Pittsburgh Pirates cheater pitcher who had deliberately thrown the ball in his face. But now, the situation was different. The seats for the white audience were empty. There were no more shouts or insults. There was no difference between all the fans. No separated seats for certain communities or skin colors. Everyone sits in the same seat. There was only one person on the special bench. It was Ricky, the person who had greatly helped Jackie's life for the better. Jackie became the symbol of equality on the field. With a look full of confidence, Jackie hit the ball and hit a home run for his team.